Hello, welcome back to Ken O'Connor Racing. What I want to talk about today are these uh, Honda crankshafts. On the left, this is a crankshaft out of an older CR250 Honda. It's a motocross bike. On the right hand side, it's a Honda TRX250R. Again, it's an older crankshaft. Uh, I want to fill you in on a couple of a couple of misconceptions and a lot of things to be told about this crank that just aren't, uh, just aren't true. First thing is when a machine shop tells you they can't rebuild these, they're right, they can't, but you ca they can be rebuilt. We're going to show you that, we're going to cover that too, but the reason they say that, this is the solid part of the crankshaft. This is solid steel. The pin gets pressed through it, but this, these are what I like to call tin cans. These are, this is just sheet metal, and this is pressed into this crank somehow, I've never taken, I've taken one apart years ago, I know what's inside of there, but as far as taking it apart and reassembling, reassembling I have heard places doing it, uh, we won't do that in here. But the reason that they tell you they can't disassemble it, is when you put your press block in here, and attempt to press out, pull this piece off, what's going to happen is it's going to, it's going to bend all of the sheet metal. The sheet metal will give out. Um, we've, you know, many, many, many years ago played with it and made that mistake, and it, it bends the crap out of it. And it's just, you know, you can whack it around and make it work, but it's just not the right way of doing it. So what a lot of the dealerships will tell you when you tell them that you need your crank rebuilt, they're going to tell you that, no, we can't do it. It's impossible to rebuild that crank, but we can sell you a brand new OEM Honda crank, which is definitely the way to go. For $351 and change, I think is less. Probably the best deal you'll ever get on it is $299. And that's a brand new Honda crankshaft. It's worth the money. Um, nobody's going to want to spend that. So the next thing a dealer is going to offer you is he's going to offer you an aftermarket Honda crankshaft. Things are beautiful. They look good. They're made in China. The materials that they're using to make these crankshafts are substandard. It's not even close to what Honda's going to give you. They're going to sell it to you because dealerships are in the business to make money. So am I. What we did is we came up with something a little bit different. I'm going to show you how we take this apart. And uh, we use a Pro-X connecting rod made in Japan. Um, superior materials, nothing wrong with these connecting rods. We've installed thousands of these things and I can tell you honestly I've never had a problem. Standard crankshafts, this is out of a Yamaha I think 2006 YZ125. This is solid steel. So when you attempt to take this apart, you, you can brace everything here and just take that pin apart. And again, this is sheet metal. That's all these are, stuffers and uh, that's why they're going to tell you they can't do it. One thing that we found is when you use the substandard materials or substandard crankshafts, and I'm not going to go into manufacturers names, this is what can happen. Let's get this so you can see it better. I just got this bin back on Friday. This is an engine that I did back in January. This engine has 10 hours on it. See what happened? This is actually the end of the crankshaft broke off. One thing that we do here at Kennel Connor Racing, and I'll always do it, is I let my customers provide their own parts. I can give them the best advice that any human being can give it to give, but you know they're still going to send me paper-based gaskets and uh, Chinese crankshafts. And this is what happened. So. I think on this particular crankshaft, I sell these rebuilt with the rod, top end bearing, for $120. I think the aftermarket price is probably about $149. So I guess the uh, scope of this little video here is, uh, is times two. We're going to show you how you can actually rebuild these and um, you know we'll hopefully educate you guys as to you know what the dealers are doing to you and what kind of materials are out there and definitely uh, avoid them like the plague uh, it's substandard materials you're gonna have problems uh, same company that manufactured this crankshaft for the for the blaster we've seen many times YZ 250s same thing breaking off here I don't know why uh, that's happening um, but I'm gonna submit the other uh, crankshaft for a claim and hopefully they'll give me a reason the company that's manufacturing these crankshafts, it's no, uh, it's no secret to them. So they know what's happening, but um, they're refusing to change their manufacturing practices and, 
in uh, refusing to bring stuff back into the into the United States of America where it's going to be made right. Um, so you know, once again, uh, corporate big corporations being driven by the almighty dollar. So enough of that, and let's uh, let's get on to showing you how you can rebuild one of these. This is one of um, several. I call them press plates that we use. We build them right in here to do the uh, disassembly of the crankshaft. And again, I'll just give you a better idea of what I was talking about. We just slide the crank inside of it, set it up on a press so this is actually you know 90 degrees inverted, and then drive this pin, and that's going to separate this web from the crank, and then just go in the opposite direction and take the pin out the other way. You really don't want to try and press the pin through everything at the same time. It just generates too much force. And again, the reason that we can't do this is because these tin cans are made out of sheet metal, and they'll compress and bulge out and just distort everything. So now for the meat and potatoes, I'm going to show you what we came up with. The components that we're going to be replacing with this crankshaft, like we do with every crankshaft, is uh, we're going to replace the connecting rod, we're going to replace the thrust washers, the crank pin, the big end bearing, you can't see that, and the top end bearing, you can't see that. And uh, we'll show you how we get this thing taken apart. This is a pneumatic die grinder with a really big wheel on it. And uh, just thinking about things a different way, I'm going to cut this connecting rod right down to this pin. Then I'm going to make this uh, crankshaft two pieces. At that point, I'm down to virgin steel on the inside, hard material, not, not the sheet metal, and I'll be able to push the pins out without damaging my uh, tin cans. And this is how we do it. Went ahead and got this crank pin and connecting rod cut in half, and you see we just split the rod. This thing was pretty pretty bad. Here's what I was talking about, you can start to see it. This is the mating line for the tin can. All of this, again, is just sheet metal. And this is part of the, the crankshaft web itself. So I'm going to put this on top of a bushing in the press, flip it this way, put a push pin here, and I'm going to drive that pin out next, both sides. Okay, we got our pins pressed out. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, take these webs, get them cleaned up. I'm going to do that by throwing it in the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm going to actually hit them with a wire brush first, throw them in the cleaner, hit them with a little brake clean when we're done, get them immaculate, and then uh, I'll show you how we put it together. This is our crankshaft all cleaned up, ready for assembly, our new Pro-X rod kit. And as I mentioned, we had uh, four thrust washers in here. They're just different thicknesses. These are one millimeter thick. These are one and a half. And again, they do this just to cover, cover a wide uh, variety of years for this particular model. The rod's probably all the same. There's probably some differences in the web. We're going to be using the one millimeter shims or thrust washers, so we'll stash those for a later time. We're going to be using our uh, special assembly jig to put this crank together, and there's a couple of reasons. Number one, it's wicked accurate. Number two, this being a unique crankshaft for these tin cans, if for any reason there's any misalignment of the crankshaft, uh, traditionally we'll take a we'll take a lead hammer or a, bre or a copper punch and a hammer and knock these things around until they're lined up, which is totally acceptable practice. That's how you get a crankshaft perfect. Um, this particular model, because of the the tin cans, you can't hit this. So um, you know it has to be aligned perfect the first time. Uh, so again, we're going to take the pin and first press it into the short end of the crank. I call it you know, the. This is the longer side, this is a clutch drive side, so we're going to press the pin in from the other side, then set the uh, crankshaft jig up and put this thing together for real. Here's another little piece of information for you in case this is something that you want to try. 
some of these rod kits, the lower end bearing, the uh, pins stay in the bearing. Some of them they don't. Um, this particular one, as soon as I take the pin out and install it into the other web, all of these little bearings fall out. And I know what's going to happen, so you just keep it on a nice clean surface. Uh, to get these back in and over the pin, you need some kind of a sticking agent. And all I use is good old petroleum jelly, also known as Vaseline. And just put a little, little bit of it around the lip. And what that's going to do is when you install the bearings, it's just going to hold on to it. And as soon as you start your bike, the stuff is going to break down instantly. And there we go with the assembly getting ready to get pressed together. You get your thrust washers, your big end bearing, your connecting rod, everything ready to go. Okay, we got our crankshaft in this jig. And the way this works, we've got two blocks of steel. We built this in here. These were married, pinned together, line board dead center, Thompson linear shafting. Everything's precision built. This thing cannot go together wrong. Um, the pin again is in the top half. Put the connecting rod, thrust washers, big end bearing in, and this is the piece that we're pressing it into. So by driving down on the top of this plate, this has no choice but to go together correctly. And uh, we're just going to bring it in a little bit. I'm getting a little bit ahead of the video here. I just I had a phone call I had to deal with, and just we'll just finish this up real quick. But what you saw me doing in the press is I stopped, and the reason I stopped is I want I want to get this crankshaft out of the jig so I could put positive pressure on the pin and continue pushing it into the crankshaft until the proper thrust was achieved. In this case, it's 19 thousandths. Uh, when we started, I used a set of dial calipers and I took a reading here and that reading came out to be two inches 349,000 so that uh, combination of that and the thrust is where I'm going to stop on the crankshaft so we went ahead and did that the problem I'm having with this crankshaft and we knew it before we started I always take these and put them in a set of bench centers before we even take them apart and see how bad they were and at that point we determined that this had taken a little bit of a pounding over its lifetime from uh, a couple people taking it out, I guess. Always a bad thing to do is, is hit this with a hammer, and it's got a little bit of distortion right here where the threads are, so it's impossible to put this back in a set of bench setters and try and true it. So as an alternate method, I have this little bearing stand, and we just set the bearing surfaces on these little razor roller bearings, and then I can take a, a reading from there. So what we ended up with, if you watch that needle, It's pretty darn good crankshaft. That's within a thousandths, and that's completely acceptable by any industry standard. And it's as close as we're going to get it. Uh, but I hope this helps and shows you that you can rebuild these uh, tin can type CR TRX crankshafts. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call at com. And thanks for watching.